any excuse for something like that. Let's uh, speak to Nisaki. He runs the National Youth Project. Bigger fish. We're going to have a look at the sort of damage as, as we're chatting to you. I mean, when you see this, can you ever defend that? Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's defendable. I think that uh, destruction is, you know, it has to stop now. But I think what we have to do is look at why the reasons why it's happened, really. I think they're really important. I think young people feel marginalised, they feel disenfranchised with the, with the society as a whole. I think we're in a time now where young people are facing the highest unemployment since the Second World War. I think also on top of that we've kind of raised the, the, the challenges towards being in education and young people don't see a future for themselves. So this for me feels like the actions of young people, and not just young people, you know, there's a wider group of people involved, people who don't feel like they have an investment in society or society is investing in them. We're going to move a little bit further down Nee so that this gentleman can carry on with his work and try and board up and uh, make it a little bit easier for Jim as well. We're looking at Cafe Rouge here. You know, this is Ealing though. This is, a, a, I've been saying all afternoon, a very affluent part of West London. Um, there's not a lot of deprivation here. Why would somewhere like this be targeted, do you think? I, and I, is it appropriate? I, I think uh, the reason why is is that there's an un what, what we're seeing now is an underlying sense of resentment, you know, and that young people are, are feeling frustrated and that, that, that it's not just related to uh, to class even or to race i think it's a wider thing that young people as a whole are feeling marginalized in our society and so that what we're seeing is an expression of that and that what we have to do is really understand and get to the bottom of that and find a way i think also what's really interesting is that you've got this 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 movement of young people now and and from for me and from the work that we do at bigger fish it really feels like that this is about young people having a need to be part of something and which that they don't get and which is what we try to provide yeah, but even so, do you not think that perhaps, and you know, I don't think that this is controversial, but maybe you think it is, these, these kids or some of the kids that have been doing this overnight are just doing it for the crack. Yeah, I think so. I think there's people who, you know, it's young people, they're, you know, they're bored. We, you know, we've cut the use so of... So going smash up Ealing High Street? Well, I, I think, I think it's, it's like, you know, that people are coming coming each day and it, it's, it's growing. That's the nature of young people. They're excited. They're bored, really. They don't have anything to do. And unfortunately, this is the way they chose to express it. And that combined with the frustrations is... So how do you stop it? I think the way we stop it is that, is that we, we find and tap into that need for young people to be part of something. We see it. We've just finished a tour around the country in many of the cities where there's lots of issues going on now and we've seen many aspirational young people being involved, being engaged, doing really great stuff and these are just a small contingent but actually there's a lot of young people despite the challenges that are ahead which are trying to do something great with their lives. And, but yeah exactly, these, pe these kids that have done this sort of thing here in Ealing you know as opposed to perhaps Brixton uh, or Tottenham where there, there is more obvious social yeah. deprivation, they are doing young people a disservice. I, I think I think us as a society, we all ultimately have to take responsibility for young people because they are our future. They are a true reflection of how we are as a society. So we have to really look at ourselves. It's easy to point the finger at young people. It's easy to say that certain people are doing certain things. But actually what we have to look at is how are we investing in young people and, and what future are they are they growing into? You're saying that um, in order to deal with it long term, we have to invest in young people. What about tonight? How can we stop it happening again tonight? I, I think that it's there's a lot of police doing that today. Yeah, I think there's a lot of police doing that today. I think it's about the community leaders. I think that that's what that's what has been needed, and that's what really needs to happen. Is that one of the key things to this is community engagement, is finding the role models, finding people that young people still respect and still want to listen to and still can relate to, and bringing them into this. And I think that's how partly why we're here, and I think that's how we get out of it. I, I don't know how uh, involved you were um, last night and, and aware of what was, was happening. Camden. Okay, yeah. so. Basically, it kicked off about 8 o'clock, yeah. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, um, these people were being terrorised. Yeah. A, a bloke in his 60s was up on the high street, he said he tried to stop some of them, he got beaten. Yeah. Uh, he's now in a critical condition in hospital. It's difficult, isn't it? You can, you can appreciate our viewers who are listening and they think, I have no sympathy. I understand, and and there is no sympathy for that. You know, there's no, there's no reason, no excuse, no justification for that, right? and it has to stop. Right, but what we have to do then is understand how we got here and then and how to get ourselves out of it and the lessons need to be learned fast you know even immediately you know so you think that we're in for 
more of the same, at least in the short term? I, I, think, I think the short term we have to do what we have to do in order to make it stop, but I think in, in the longer term we have to really understand and, and make changes, real significant changes, not sound bites, not just you know, you know, things to grab headlines, but actually real, real motivational, aspirational things that change young people's futures. Down to parenting? Uh, I and mean, part of the thing is that you have to really recognize that in the economic climate that we live in, that you parents, you know, yes, there, there's issues there that need to be acknowledged and recognized, but also we have parents who are working every hour that God sends in order just to make ends meet. As I was meet. saying earlier, I work yeah. uh, a full-time job, yeah. uh, but my son doesn't come and smash up windows. But, but you're most probably, to be fair, you're most probably, you're most probably uh, in, in a higher wage bracket yeah, and you're I'm working. Yeah, I'm from a council estate in Wigan. Me too. And, and you know, and my parents didn't, you know, they yeah. taught me right from wrong. Yeah. I think that I think people know right from wrong. I, I think it, it's past that. It's what we're seeing is an expression of frustration that combined with you know the, the, the kind of crowd swell in there. So I think it's I think parents yes they need to do more and everyone. I don't think any one one person is responsible. I think everyone has to take a collective responsibility and at, at each level from our leadership all the way down to the very young people that are committing these 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 are these just really terrible things. I think we have to all take responsibility for that and that's the only way. There is no one one segment of the society society is going to fix this situation, it's all of us together and you as a good parent and, and other people as good parents, they, they need to, to be encouraging that in other, in other peers. Not sure my son would say I was a good parent, but he would certainly, hopefully, not do this sort of stuff. Other parents who um, are working full time, what would you say to them today? I would say know where your kid is tonight. Yeah, and I, of course, know where your kid is tonight. You know, make them make them understand. You know, the consequences of what they're doing. You know, bring them back into the house. You know, and make and make them see that there's actually more that they have to be working towards. You know, and work with them towards that. And I think that message needs to be reflected all the way through. Pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very Pleasure much, Dave, for joining us. Thank Thanks you. very much. You've got some thoughts on that, I'm sure. Use at sky.com, eight four five zero one. Let's chat to uh, to Grace.